Yo, 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 what is good, YouTube? It's your boy Punk, and I'm back with another one. And today we are back with some more Street Fighter 6. And it's a very good video and important informational video today. Something I don't really usually do, but people do act for it from time to time. And I have done one in Street Fighter 5, so uh, why not come and do one in Street Fighter 6? Especially since the game is not out and some people did not get their hands on it. This will be helpful for when you do get the game, especially if it does not change much from the mechanics that I'm going to be showing here. And today, we're pretty much going to be giving you five tips on, you know, what's very important in the game to know and useful things to know pretty much to help you and your street fighter 6 experience much easier and without further ado before we get into these tips i need you to go like comment subscribe and turn that post notification bell on and let's get into it okay so the first thing we want to talk about is you want to learn your drive rush combos because these are the combos that's important for when you get whiff punishes, when you just get a confirm and neutral off of like a buffer or something. Someone walking to your button like that and you're just buffering it. You want to learn your drive rush combos. I'm not going to have all of your characters combos, but I play Jamie, so I'm just going to use Jamie today. You see how Jamie, I would just go straight into stand medium punch and I get a crouch fierce. And it's also important to know that when you do do drive rush, all of your buttons become plus four, three more? Hold on. No, four, yeah. So all your buttons are plus four extra when you do a drive rush. So this usually is plus five, but when you cancel it into a drive rush, it's plus nine, and that lets you get the crouch fear. So you need to remember that you get more plus frames when you do drive rush. Tip number two is want to talk about punish counter. Pretty much if you get a whiff punish or you block a DP or you punish anything in the game, you someone do a low forward fireball and it's punishable, it's a punish counter pretty much. Everything is a punish counter in this game. You want to learn your punish counter combos. Watch, like if I go here to this whiff punish practice thing, watch when I whiff punish. Look at that punish counter. You see that? And that enables me right here like usually since i'm too far here to do light or medium record but record like heavy record doesn't usually combo right from low forward but since this is a punish counter it actually combos because when it's a punish counter it's just like a drive rush combo it gains plus four advantage so if you whiff punish someone you can actually get a big combo depending on what's the whiff punish that you get you know jamie could not get that much because his whip punish isn't that big. It's pretty much just a, like a low forward. So I usually just go into that. But some characters can get full combos off of these whip punishes because they become more plus. But yeah, with Jamie, I usually just do that. So, okay, yeah, so this is pretty much would be my punish counter, my go to punish counter combo. And when they're in the corner, I like to do this one a a a a a see and that's a my punish counter combos for dps kind of similar to a crush counter but not exactly because you just get this from even a whiff punish right so all of that is good sonic check this out at this point i know what you're thinking this channel is hilarious right how do you show support by subscribing of course sounds like an invitation to party next tip is going to be a very important one to help you in your journey so you don't drop combos or get upset because you think you did something that don't actually work and that's going to be how to use your three supers you have a level one which is this is jamie's level one then you have this level two which is a he has an insult super for a level two not everyone has that but they have the same kind of properties you know it all runs on the same properties pretty much on what i'm going to be telling you and then you have your level three so of course start off with the level one level ones you can only combo level ones from normal attacks so you see this that is a combo of course but if i try to do a special move into it you see i can't do a special move 
into the super, right? Because that does not work in this game. They made it short that you cannot just do a special move into level one because it probably would just be doing too much damage. So you cannot do that. And also, you cannot do a non-EX special move into a level two. So you might think you could do special move into level two, right? So no. Not exactly the same properties, but you can do a level two if you do an EX move. See that? So this goes for every character, not just because Jamie's super is an install or anything. EX is the only thing you can do, or you can, of course, cancel it from a regular attack. You could cancel a normal into a level two, but for special moves, you can actually cancel EX into level twos. And then for level threes, you can actually cancel from everything. So you can do your special moves into a level three, nine EX. You can do an EX special move into it. Or of course you can do the trustworthy to normal attack into the level three. So that's gonna be important. So you don't get upset when you might drop a combo. You think you could do like, oh, boom into level one. No, 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 you cannot in this game. Level ones is only from normal attacks. And now we are into tip number four. This one is going to be an important tip and I'm sure it's something that a lot of people want to know and that's the drop impact. What do you do against it? They actually have something in the training room in this game called drop impact defense practice so you can actually practice it. One thing I like to do of course is drop impact it back and you get a full combo. Uh, you know, you can do whatever your character's optimal combo is. With Jamie, I could do like that. Another thing you can do is if you see, you're pressing a button and you see someone drop impact, you can also do button into drop impact as long as your button is cancelable to a drop impact, is special cancelable. You can always just press a button and drop impact like that. And it actually does extra damage because if you notice, you see the gray health that your button is making them build up. Yeah. You see that gray health? In training room, of course, it refills, but yeah, that would be full damage from the gray health and that. So it would be a little more than what I'm getting. So yeah, one more thing you can do that no one has really done in this perfect period, which is, I think, pretty hard, you see. Cause you had to get it on the, of course, perfect frame, which seems very unrealistic right now. So maybe you should not do this one. And the last, but not least is, you know, frame data does change when you're in burnout and we're going to turn on the frame meter for this. So you can see that lock off. Look at that. It's plus one, right? And then all these buttons are pretty much negative. It's minus five. This is minus three, minus three, minus three. This is the only plus button, right? He only he has one plus button as you've seen me press, right? One plus button. Watch when I put them in burnout state right now. This is when you get all your plus frames. Look at that, plus five. This is even plus one. This move right here, this is plus one. This is plus one when you're burnt out. There's nothing you can do. I'm plus here. That's plus one. You see that? All the frame data gains plus four advantage. Yeah, so you see all of this plus four advantage. So you have to remember that when your opponent is burnt out, that's when you can start getting your frame trap started. People keep saying that frame traps are dead in this game, but no, you just... You know, it all depends on burning your opponent out and how you deal with that. So the frame data does change when you are burnt out. Your buttons still start up the same as you can see. All the startup and stuff is the same when I'm burnt out. Even burnt out, you are still plus on block. So you also, when you're burnt out, another good thing to know that your character, you see, it's much slower in walk speed. Their walk speed is so much slower. So you do want to recognize that you don't want to get into burnout too much because it is going to be a big risk. So yeah, that is going to be the five tips that I have for you for Street Fighter 6. Let me know if these tips are useful for you or 
you find them to be useful and if you've seen people playing the beta over the week and you know you've seen them maybe having these same troubles let me know down in the comment section how you feel about this type of video and if i should make more of these when street fighter 6 does release i appreciate everyone for watching this because i had a lot of fun making one of these i don't really do it often so when i do i do have a lot of fun trying to teach you all out there some stuff and you know pretty much put you in the mind of a pro player i guess so yeah let me know what you thought of today's video and as always i will see you in the next one